Hey guys, happy new years. So yesterday I did 13 hours stream and the next day I did 4 hours stream. So <laughs> I am pretty tired and my voice may be a bit strange. But I really want to get this done. I have two builds that I want to show and well actually I already want to do another build so I am very far behind. So I'm gonna squeeze in two builds in one video. And it's not gonna be like a proper build guide video. It's just gonna be more like a, an idea with some testings. First build will be about Onigoroshi, Heavy Strike, Crit, Slayer. And the other one will be Cyan, Hierophant, Dead Eye or just Dead Hero, Crit, Spark, Totems with Dual Shimmeron Vans. So the first build, Heavy Goroshi Weapon, Heavy Strike Skill. And the idea, well basically I really wanted to use Heavy Strike Threshold Jewels for a very long time. But I never got a chance because single target skills was was lacking in damage all the time. And you had to use melee splash and the clear speed would still be terrible. But now that we got Ancestral Call, clear speed is sort of good now. And Onigoroshi always have 6 link and it is level 1. So I thought why not try it. So the way I imagined was like I have high crit chance, one RNG part, then I have 40% chance to deal double damage with my heavy strike, that's second RNG. And then I also wanted to use rootless, so every third hit I would do massive hits. And if you crit, roll double damage and do rootless while under her blessing, you would do insane hit damage. But turns out I kind of hate that kind of RNG. And Onigoroshi Sword is not the best for such a build. But some people said that they tried using Starforge with, uh, <laughs> with such a build and they could do one third of Minotaur's life in one hit. I assume you would need way better gears. So for my items I actually decided to use Abyssus helmet and for my 6 link I am using Fortified. I also have Abyssus uh, unique belt with uh, 2 jewels, uh, really nothing too crazy. Lion's Roar, Azira's Promise Flask and I did try to get blind because <laughs> using Abyssus is very risky and blinding enemies causes them to miss more often. Also I am using iron reflexes to get, uh, well to get more armor from my evasion because I do have some evasion on my gears. And I do have shade gloves with blind support gem and I socketed vengeance into that uh, into those gloves. So when I get hit and trigger vengeance it most often blinds enemies around me. That combined with casting damage taken and feeble gives me sort of enough survivability but still I do get <laughs> I do get killed quite often anyway. Also Slayer because of Leech, Valpact, haven't even done Uberlab because I simply got bored of this build. It is cool and it can be really strong especially with better optimized gears. I did Elder and his Guardians like two times and it was really easy. However they were in lower tier maps like uh, between tier 4 and tier 6. And I am only level 83 so it still has rooms to, room to improve. My heavy strike links and I kept forgetting to remove ancestral call each time I fought guardians. So my heavy strike links are ancestral call, increased critical strikes which may not be necessarily, melee physical damage, elemental damage with attacks, fortify. I don't feel comfortable using damage on full life support gem. And like I said rootless, well it was just too much RNG. So yeah links can still be improved but I don't think that I'm gonna continue playing this build. I mean it is fun build at least for me but it doesn't really have anything interesting to it. It's just damage, critical, more damage, leech, just so meta. And yes I know about Molten Strike, I know about Infernal Blow builds but I wanted to specifically try Heavy Strike with two Threshold Jewels. So there you have it, here's my passive skill tree. And let's move to the next build. I really wanted to try Spark again, it was very old school to play Sparks with Totems. And now we got this new Elder item, Shimron Tornado Van. Each gives a lot of lighting damage to spells, crit multiplier, base crit chance per power charge, block chance but also has one drawback, 400 lighting damage taken per second per power charge if you have dealt critical strike recently. However because of the, the way wording works in Path of Exile. It says when you uh, do critical strike, but if you uh, if you use totems, traps, or mines, it does not trigger this degen. So I decided to go with totem sparks and dual wield these vans. Get all the benefits and no drawback. And I chose sign because it is easy to get power charges with fire of sub ascendancy 
because it gives 50% chance to gain power charge when you place a totem. Also gives mana which you will sort of need and skills in your helmet can have up to one additional totem summoned at a time. So you basically can have three. Also that eye sub ascendancy works very well for spark. So I was planning to craft some helmet with essence of horror on shaper base helmet. So I would hopefully get some something cool as well. But I did not expect to craft this beast and all it took was one essence of horror. So basically this helmet is like a pseudo 6 link. 30% more elemental damage is like a one support gem. Hypothermia is also very good because I am using call of the brotherhood. So I can shock and chill and <laughs> this works very nice for hypothermia. I was always shocking Ak-10 Kitawa. However single target damage is really not the best. I mean it's not bad but my totems usually die before I can benefit from all that damage and I am kind of squishy but I am level 78 so I got like 10 levels to improve and also get better item upgrades. Oh and also I crafted this beast armor, uh, nothing too interesting just a lot of life, fire, lighting resistance and spell crit chance which is global. I am of course joking, these two items, uh, I mean helmet and this armor is pretty expensive and I was insanely lucky. I even crafted them in like in like half an hour, but you don't really need this kind of armor. You only need to craft the helmet with essence of horror and hope you get something good uh, from shaped mods. I am also using Azir's promise flask, poacher's aim, uh, which I think you don't really need, you can replace with way better abyssal jewel. Also spire of stones to get more totem life and anatomical knowledge to get more life for myself. But I mean there are plenty of ways to improve this build, especially <laughs> with the new abyssal jewels. I don't really want to abandon this build yet so I may try to improve it. Like I definitely need better boots, uh, better, better ring, better amulet, get better abyssal jewels, maybe even use unique abyssal belt. And currently with 6 power charges I do have 90% critical strike chance. And my spark is linked with other lighting damage, faster casting and spell totem. And spark is only level 18, other gems are also not maxed. I am using wrath for damage of course, casting damage taken with immortal call and enfeeble, actually I do have enfeeble. But I also have self cast elemental weakness, herald of thunder for more damage and flame dash. And also stone golem or whichever golem you like. Now here's an important warning, keep in mind that you can still trigger this fine degen if you flame dash into enemies and crit, crit them, if you have gloves enchantment that uh, hit enemies and crit them, if you take ice nova or shock nova shrine and crit enemies and you will start losing life fast, especially if you don't have a lot of life. Oh and also if your totems or your golem kill enemy with a degen, it counts as your kill and you may trigger a herald of thunder if the enemy was shocked and then you can just accidentally hit enemies with your herald of thunder and if it rolls crit you will start a degen. So yeah it is definitely hardcore viable, at least until you die. And this is my passive skill tree. But in video description you will find the links to the well higher level passive skill tree and all the other information. Now I did uber lab with this build and when doing it I said in my stream whichever helmet enchantment I'm gonna get I'm gonna make a build with that skill and I rolled blade vortex. So in the very near future I will be doing blade vortex build and we did theory craft it. I wanted to do chieftain but just inquisitor is just so much better, at least the way I wanted to do. And I will be using the same helmet and armor that I showed before in my sparker. So I just need to get two pretty OP shaper scepters and I should be able to get over 300,000 shaper dps with more than 180 increased life from a passive skill tree. So hopefully I will be able to do some higher end game content. And I mean I do need to do it because I want to get a beast portal effect for 36 challenges. And <laughs> just to make it clear I have never even attempted shaper and I played this game for like almost 5 years now. So I am actually pretty excited. Also uh, before I do a build guide video for blade vortex I may release one video <laughs> and talk about how you can get over 5 million ignite damage. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do a build with that build because it requires some insanely OP items. Not perfect but still pretty OP items. And I'm getting close to 10 minutes so I can finally end the video and put two ads in one video. Yeah except it's gonna get demonetized so whatever.
Oh, one more thing. Next time I release a video, you will see my new intro. Intro that I'm gonna be using in every future videos. I will be buying it and not making myself, so it should look more professional. <sighs> I do like these kinds of fancy stuff. And 10 minutes. Thank you for watching and see you soon.